Greetings and salutations. I am your humble Adobe instructor, AJ Wood, and you're watching episode number 11 of I Create Content. I want to thank you for joining me on today's show. If you caught Monday's episode, we were celebrating July 4th and I showed you how to composite some fireworks inside of Photoshop. It's a really busy week here for me in just a few days at the invitation of David Zeiser. I'll be getting on the road and joining him, Kevin Ames and Lynn Michelle for the Photo Pro Summer School held in Lexington, Kentucky for the PPA. I'll be doing that through the weekend, July 9th through the 12th, and then it's off to Kansas City, Missouri because I'll be at the Designer Developer Workflow Conference with D. Sadler, Pariah Burke, Justin Silly, and a host of others. So, I've got lots of tips for you today, some more tips on Friday, and hey, we might take the show on the road next week. Today, I'm answering some user questions, lots of questions coming in about how and when to use and why to use blend modes inside of Photoshop. So, let's get to it. All right, I think the easiest way to understand blend modes is to see them in action. So here I have a picture of my daughter, and what I'm going to do is turn on a top layer that shows you black, 50% gray, and white. And you can see with the normal blend mode, the black, gray, and white cover the picture and you can't see through it. If I change to the multiply blend mode, here we can start to see how the base layer, which is the image of my daughter, and the colored layer, black, gray, and white, actually mix together to give you the composite image. Now, to really understand the blend modes and get the full descriptions, I've created a short link to Adobe's help page. Simply go to ajwood.com slash PS blend and that will give you a full description of all the different blend modes. Today for the purpose of the video to keep it short I'm just going to demonstrate a few. So looking on the screen you can see I'm in the multiply blend mode and in the multiply blend mode essentially we are darkening the image. You'll notice anything that is black is going to stay black. So if I take my photograph multiply it against black black winds. You can see that anything that is absolute white is going to be ignored. So in this case, you can see the photograph. If you take a look at the area that is 50% gray, that range between white and black is essentially going to darken the image. If I turn around and choose a different blend mode, if I go to screen, well now we're multiplying against the inverse of the image. So anything that is white is going to stay white. You'll notice in this case anything that is black gets dropped out of the blend. Anything that happens to be 50% gray, again that range between white and black, is actually going to make the photo brighter. Let's take a look at overlay. If I change to overlay blend mode, now when I'm in the overlay blend mode, we're either multiplying or we're screening. We're actually darkening the image or lightening it based on whether we're black or white. We're keeping those highlights and shadows essentially in the image and we have 50% gray which is neutral in this case and is most part being ignored. Now I have been using some keyboard shortcuts for these blend modes. If you're on the YouTube channel right now, on your screen you should see the quick YouTube short link that's going to flash and show you my keyboard shortcuts video. I'll call out some of these keyboard shortcuts for you and we'll continue on. So what can you do with these blend modes? Well, first off, if I bring up a different background, in this case I've got some fireworks, if I simply change the blend mode to screen, which in this case is Shift Option S on a Mac or Shift Alt S on a PC, that's going to drop out the black and now you can see I can move the fireworks on the screen. I didn't have to make a selection. I could do the same thing if I chose to use fire as a background. So once again, Shift Option S on a Mac or Shift Alt S on a PC, now the black drops out. And this certainly represents the Texas heat. 
<laughs> during the blue bonnet season. But let me turn the fire off right away. You could also add some smoke eh, or some uh, uh, fog if you wanted to, to an image. Certainly there wouldn't be any fog in this day, but if I do multiply, if I do shift option M for multiply or shift alt M for multiply, you'll see in this case it gets really dark. Hey, once again, if I opt to do screen shift option S, now I get appears what appears to be uh, kind of clouds or smoke. I could drop the transparency or the opacity in the photo to complete that smoky effect. Or you can simply add a texture to an image. Here I've got a quick texture that I created and once again I'll just go through all the blend modes. You can quickly cycle the blend modes by actually using your shift and plus and minus keys. So if you take a look at the screen I'm just going to do shift with my plus and minus keys and we'll step through the different blends. So here are the different blends being applied to that image and you can see the different effects that they have to create some sort of texture. Again, I could combine these with different opacity changes to strengthen or lighten the effect. So that's just kind of a quick overview of blend modes, right? Once again, the full description of the blend modes can be found at ajwood.com slash psblends. And a quick summary, multiply is going to drop white, screen is going to drop black, Overlay is going to drop 50% gray. So those are some quick blend modes. As always, I'm AJ Wood. Appreciate you tuning in every Monday, Wednesday, Friday for some new tutorial tips. Please subscribe to the channel, rate, comment, share it on Facebook and Twitter, and I'll see you on Friday.